Welcome to today's interview in the Hellcroft Podcast. I am Mark Miller, and today I have James Beatty with me to answer some questions. We are hoping to get to know each other better during these first few podcasts. Share a little about your history together. I thank you, Mark. That is very <laughs> helpful, and I hope to give you all, all the answers and questions that you require me. So, did you guys know each other before the podcast group? We just rode the bus together. We really didn't know each other. You know, I see him on the bus for about a year before I even, two years before I even. I rode the bus for about nine years, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The city bus. So. And you guys have both been at Hillcroft for a long time, right? I've been at Hillcroft for like, I'm on, well, 2000, I think 18. It was like 10 years. This is what, 2023? So, how many years has that been? Almost 15, then. Yeah. Cool. Mark, how long have you been at Hillcroft? 1994. Yeah. Cool. So you guys have both been here, but you were both working yeah. in the workshop, right? At the time. At the time. Yeah. Why Why are you part of the podcast group? That's correct. I am Mark. Thanks for the, <laughs> enlightening me on that. I appreciate What's that. What's the reason why you're in the podcast group? I'm in the podcast so I can... Uh, People can learn about the podcast and what the uh, the uh, world of worlds and talk about interesting things that people like to hear about podcasts. Podcasts, you know. What I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. And listen, to Mark, and uh, learn about each other's interviews and things, such as Mark, my good friend here, and uh, Rebecca. The, the holes at Rebecca, the the person who hosts it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to teach you guys how to do all of it so I can be lazy and not have to do anything. You can host, you know, so host <laughs> podcast, no, so. I'll put a badge on host. Mm-hmm. All right, Mark. true, right? What else you got? What kind of experience do you, do you have with podcasts? What kind of experiences do I have in podcasts? Well, we <laughs> talked to the uh, talked. We went to Delaware County State Fair, and we talked to the guy in, in charge of the, uh, was it the fair? The, the guy lot. we talked to um, was a vendor. So he, the was, vendor. he was in one of the food trucks. The vendor food truck. And then we talked about, and then we uh, looked at animals. I mean, you got an elephant here. And yeah, it was a good elephant there. I know it looked like he was shouting on. So is so. this the first podcast that you've been part of? Indeed. Yeah. Did you know what a podcast was before you joined the group? Yeah, because my um, staff I used to have, uh, his name was Adam, he used to do the podcast. Cool. So talk to him to it and think of things to say. He'd listen to it overnight, staff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why well, is a podcast? What is a podcast? You learn. Uh, what is a podcast? We learn, we learn about the podcast, uh, we talk about things, we have interest in people who want to hear what they want to experience in the podcast, you know. How long have you lived in Muncie? I was born here, but I was away from Muncie for a long time because I came back from Indianapolis to here and I spent about the past 10, 12 years. Ago. Was it about the time that you came to Hillcroft, about 15 years? No. I uh, Newcastle Hillcroft used to be in New- oh, okay. came to Newcastle too, Hillcroft. Yeah, yeah, I remember that I one. I was too. So you went to Newcastle and then you came up to Muncie? Yeah. And the podcast is kind of like a job. Have you ever had any other jobs? I've had I've had like over a dozen jobs. But uh I hope to keep one the successful job. This may be a job, it's like a job podcast. Like, yep. I mean, I like the podcast, do something to do. I learn from other people, people learn from me, others learn from me. But most of all, Mark, what makes you special is, mm-hmm. is that, that you're, he, 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 you are independent. Is he like, uh, does he have a little bit of time? Is he like, uh, like me? You can ask him. Are you a little bit of time like me? Uh-huh. Are you emancipated or do you have a guardian? I live alone. I live you live alone, alone like you're you're emancipated. Uh-huh. I am as well. I am as well. Okay. Come and go do as you please, right? Uh-huh. We earned that right, then when we earned it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So currently, neither one of you have a job right now, right? 
That is correct. So, um, James, in the future, is that something that you want to pursue? Do you want to get another job? Actually, I'm a job coach is helping me really do that right now, but so far we've had no luck. Yeah, finding jobs can be difficult, but that yeah. is a goal of yours. It's a goal. Yeah, Mark, do you think you're going to get another job or do you think you're about ready to retire? Think about it ready to retire. Yeah. Yeah, we've talked about that before that you're like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to look for another one. How old are you, Mark? Uh, 49. I am 57. Yeah. I'd love to. I mean, you have a lot of life goals that you want to accomplish, right? I do. I do. Uh, I'm sure Mark does. Is retirement age 55? It is different for different people. Yeah. For, for a lot of jobs and for the government, a lot of times it's senior citizens. Well, that could be any age. Yeah. yeah. I, I've worked over a dozen jobs, but I haven't worked enough years to even consider retirement. My phone's going, how long? May I see? What's, so, James, what's your favorite job that you've ever worked? Well, my favorite job is skating rink. Yeah, is that long time You must skate, Have you ever heard of that place? Uh-huh. Yep. You both recently lost your job, which was working at Hillcroft, right? Mm-hmm. So yes. you, Hillcroft used to pay you, correct? That's true, but the government state took our jobs. So government laws changed it, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. um, because of the being paid below minimum wage. So in the long run, yes. we hope it's better for yeah. our friends, but for the short term, that means that you just don't have a job right now. That's correct. Yeah. Mark, do you have any more questions on there? Yeah, what is the most interesting thing about you? I, uh, me, I, I like to dance. I like to ride my bike, and I have I like to help people, and I like hearing you. Teach me about the podcasts and everything, and that's that's enlightens me to know that you talk to me and I talk to you and can ride the bus sometimes together. And you like yeah. to sing too, right? Huh? Do you like to sing? Oh, I love to sing a bit out. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. What are you good at, Mark? Huh? What are you good at? What's your talents? <sighs> I could name two. Uh, For one thing, brains. you're quiet. And that's good. Uh-huh. And you and you don't you don't back talk people. I noticed that. Yeah. And you have a talent. Like you know what? It keeps you alive uh-huh. and there you go. Know, so Mark, what did you tell us that your thing was? And you're happy all the time. Get that too. That's good. That's good. I don't think the microphone picked it up. What was your answer, Mark? Ah, uh, being funny. Being funny. Being funny, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Being I a funny like character, I like that. I like being funny at times, too. I think you guys are both fun to hang My, out with. Yeah, at least it's funny, I'm sorry. <laughs> I th- we like uh, we like uh, hang out with um, with uh, Rebecca, Rebecca. Yeah, you got it. Too. <laughs> because I think she, if it weren't for her, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have you know, in the beginning, you wouldn't have even known what broadcast existed. Yeah, I think it's been a fun journey. Is there anything else on there, Mark? Uh, one last thing. Why is something you want to do in the future? Something I want to do in the future? Mm-hmm. Um, something I want to do in the future. What are some goals that you have for yourself? Goals? We'll see. Uh, I'll have a job, family, maybe I'm not too, get too old enough for that. Um, or maybe, or maybe, mm, I don't know. I think those are some big ones, though, because yeah. the week that I put that on as a question, mm-hmm. you had been telling me about how a big goal of yours was to have a family. Yeah. Um, and, raising, and raising a family, if I have a girl... Take if it, if the boy if I have a baby boy and I have Tourette, I would take care of it and and treat it good. Yeah. You know, and give it guidance and support like my mom gave me when I had it. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And learn how to take it to counseling if it was diagnosed with Tourette. I'd take it to counseling, and the counseling and 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 care for my children. I think that's grateful. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm good with my nieces and nephews. 
So you do get to hang out around kids? Yeah, my nieces and nephews, yes, they love me. I'm sure they do. I hope Jerrica, my youngest one. So, how old is your oldest niece or nephew? Oldest niece? She is, I think, 13 or 12, 13. Okay. Uh, and her name is Jerrica. Very cool. And she loves me. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, guys, I think we've had some very successful interviews. I do too. My name is James Bates, and I write the songs that are written by songs written by Beach Boys. Remember, Bruce Johnson became a hit for Barry Manilow in November 1975. This adult contemporary track was the first recorded by David Cassidy and Captain Antonio, which I remember ever so greatly, so good of them. And David Cassidy and Captain Tennille. And in May, songwriter Johnson has stated the I in the song refers to God. Interest instruments featured in the song included a symphony, orchestra, piano, and soft drum set. I first heard I write the songs, and I did, in the teen, <coughs> teens in the 1980s, which I thought was a very loving, compassionate song that touched my heart the first song of the day I heard of it. It is an important song to me and reflects on all the things I have gone through and the things in my future and the past I've left behind and look forward to a future that I can call my, my manhood. I write the songs, I write the whole world sing. I write the songs that love special things. I write the songs that make the whole world cry. I write the songs, I write the songs where music makes me dance. That's a real fun place to stand. It's for you, it's for me, it's for love, it's for me. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs that love special things. I write the songs that make the whole world cry. I write the songs, I write the songs. That was my favorite song. It reminds me a lot of my uh, younger years and and uh, the years I had in the past, the rough times to the good times. Been, I made it and, you know, and uh, made it through. Up next is Mark talking about this week's movie moment. Today's blockbuster moment pick is The Great Outdoors, starring John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. I first saw The Great Outdoors when I was 16. My dad ran the movie around Christmas 1989. The movie was originally released to theaters in 1988. My favorite scene is in the third act when John Candy character Chad Ripley and Roman's Dan Aykroyd's character finally had a fight over Roman coming to the cabin uninvited. That scene that, that really makes me laugh is when Chad, Chad says, don't call me Chester. I would recommend this movie to adults who are fan, fans of John Candy or Dan Aykroyd. Up next is some information about the Delaware County Fair and some cool stories. What day is today that we're here at the fair? What day is today? Yeah, what day Tuesday. is today? Tuesday. And it is the 18th. And yeah. My name is James Beatty. Are you doing it now? Yeah. James yeah. Beatty, and I'm right here at the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying myself. It's kind of cloudy, but 
I'm here with Rebecca and Mark, and we're just having a fun yeah. time. Yeah, and we can see all the rides that are set up, right? right. we got and a slide. What, yep. what time does the fair start? I think the rides open around 5, five. so a lot of the stuff has shifted to being evening events. Mm -hmm. um, but later, I think we're going to walk through the animal barns. Because they have, the animals are here. I love animals. I've never owned an animal, but I think it'd be great to, interesting and how yeah. it's set up and to see the animals and enjoy them and be a part of their life too. Because yeah. nature and animals is very, they love us and we love them. It's how you treat animals and animals can respond back to you in their yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Mark went way up there to get food. I don't know what he was finding. <laughs> well, Mark's enjoying himself too. Oh, yeah. Good. I feel and we don't have to have the money to enjoy a good time. Good times are about friends, and that's something I've learned. And yeah, just being a part of them and heart wise, and yeah, and just being share time with. You yeah. know, friends are important. They sure are. Important. Yeah, we got yeah. Ferris wheel. Yep, and I enjoy it. it. Smells good too. It does smell good. We're sitting beside the Polish sausage booth. And the next time I come out, I'll request enough money from the indie office to bring that extra. Yeah, food. that'd be a good idea. Our next story includes an impromptu interview that James started with somebody he met at the fair. This is the first time I worked in Muncie. Oh. So he's traveling around working at all kinds of different events. I, I travel. I live in a van and travel the country for fun. And then Lucky. I, and then I work for six or seven of these food vendors. And then I go to different places, I show up, I work their event, they pay me in cash, and then I throw that it in my gas wonderful. tank and go, well, i got to go to Colorado now. <laughs> but I accidentally booked myself solid here in, in, for, like, until October. Oh, man. That's my yeah. birthday, October. I turned 57. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So what's your I favorite state? I turned 53, Colorado. I lived in, in California most of my life. Yeah? You're San Francisco. And regardless, no, I lived in near Los Angeles and actually in Los Angeles at one point in time. And regardless of what everybody says, that state is awesome. Yeah. It really is awesome. I was telling somebody that who wanted to visit it the other day. The drawbacks about California is how much it costs to live there. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, man. Even, yeah. if, even if you're in a van like I am, I assure you, when I go to visit my friends when I'm out there, it cost me way more money because the yeah. gas is like five to seven bucks a gallon, Yeah, you know, and then like the cost of everything, food, everything, everything is more. Yeah, it's like just 30 percent more. If it's yeah. And the other fish. drawback is there's people don't really get this, which is what always cracks me up when they go, California can just fall off or well, the rest of the country will go in a recession that they will never seen like the big depression. Yeah, because. California is the, the sixth largest economy in the world. Interesting to know. Yeah, and, and California has over 40 million people that they've counted, that they can count. That right. doesn't include people who don't have papers and people, because they don't count people who don't have papers. Right. And they don't count people who, who are homeless or any of that. Right. They just estimate it. They just estimate. We just, we just believe it's this much. You know, over that so to yeah. give you to give you an example, California has more people in that state than the entire country of Canada. So that's the other thing that sucks about California is it's it's yeah. very densely populated. Yeah. And I got kind of tired of that. I'm a nature guy. They got a lot of cool nature stuff there, though. They just travel around. I do. My current van, I've been in that one for, th I've been doing it over six years. And my current yeah. van, I've been doing in that one for three years. Yeah. May was three years. Very oh, cool. And I've been, my friend, Thank you. my friend said, I wonder, I wonder how many states you've been in in that van. And I had to add it up. I had to think about it. And I started adding it up. It was 36 states and many of them multiple times. It had less than 73,000 when I bought it, and now it's at 132,000. Yeah. And Colorado is hands down my favorite state. Have you yeah. ever been there? I have not. Uh, my mom and Mick, they went to... Uh, okay. Oh, they're heating their fryers up? Yeah, they, they probably said, just started they turning Colorado them on. Colorado had rocks. Yeah, we, we do that, too. I'm about to start that at 2 o'clock. Yeah. You got to you gotta give... When people first turn on fryers, you got to give it You got to give it half an hour to 45 minutes before yeah. anybody can fry anything properly. So it's hot enough. Yeah. Well, Mark, we'll wander around. Corn and dogs are the ones that people can produce first. Because it's a lower we, temperature? It's a smaller vat. Uh, it's a higher okay. temperature. It's a smaller vat, and it's electric. 
Oh, that makes sense. And you can't heat up grease too fast. Otherwise, right. it gets nasty fast. Then all the food comes out nasty. So when you've got Mark a big deep fryer, it takes That's longer. Mark oh, yeah, hi, Mark, Mark. You come over. You come on, Mark. But, Colorado, uh, though, you got to go. Yeah, I'd you, like you to. you got to go. I'd and like if to. you get yeah, a Colorado chance, has go to the Rockies. And rocks and yeah. all that, don't they? Huge, Huge mountains. mountains that's the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky, Rocky Mountains. mountains. And you know, another state that's often overlooked that's beautiful yeah, is, yeah. is Utah. Just don't yeah. go in the summer. Oh, they that, have yeah. amazing stuff in Utah and amazing stuff in Arizona. Everybody pictures Arizona like the low desert. Well, yeah. there's a low and a high. You go to the high, it's the mountains. Yep. Like pine trees and like I was up there in, in February and um, the only reason I didn't sleep up there because I have a diesel heater in my van. The only reason I didn't sleep up there is because it was snowing so much I didn't want to dig myself out in order to pull out of where I was parking. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Because I was parking out in the forest, right? Can you imagine that much snow? I can't imagine. So you have to dig out to get out snow? the door? Yeah, because yeah, it was snowing pretty hard was, in Arizona. It was the winter. In Arizona. And, and also, that was a forest road. Yeah. A forest road. Okay. So they're not coming up there and removing any of that. And right. I got to thinking to myself when it started snowing pretty hard, I'm like, dude, you're going to fall asleep. You're going to wake up and you're going to have to dig up. the whole road out to get your van out, you know? Yeah, that probably won't be that far. But you know what, though? I got I... good clearance in all terrain yeah. tires, but it's not four wheel drive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if it was four wheel drive and I had some chains <laughs> and a little more clearance, I'd yeah. just, I'd go to town because I used to own four wheel drives. And yeah. I used to all live in the mountains drive. in, in California. Yeah. Huh? Once you get normal four wheel drive, you can experience it. It depends. You got to know what you're doing with those things. A lot of people don't know, and they mess them up. Oh yeah. And they mess up how they're driving with things. But you can take motorhomes to. Uh, you can take them everywhere, though. You can take motorhomes. When I go, like we all we all shower at Planet Fitness. Uh -huh. You get a Planet Fitness membership for 24 Brian bucks Terrell, a month, there, and you just go get a, a shower anywhere in the country, right? Yeah. When you go to Colorado, mm -hmm. and I was just telling one of my coworkers this. When you go to Colorado, every time I go to Colorado, it happens. When you go to Colorado, I don't care where that Planet Fitness is, when you pull in the parking lot, it's a sea of solar panels yeah. and roof vents. Oh, because everybody's going? They living in their I'll vehicles or traveling, and they're yeah. going in there for showers. And when I go in there, it's kind of like you got to take a number, and people are brushing their teeth and all oh, kinds wow. of... Oh, wow. And mine has solar panels and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And a refrigerator in it. Yeah, it's a big lifestyle right now. Yeah. I didn't realize it was all that Josh, until I got into you? it. No. no. That's why I thought your name was Josh. He James like, wants to make friends everywhere. No, he looks like somebody I know. It was nice meeting you guys. <laughs> nice I gotta go you. change. Thanks for talking to us. I gotta go change because nice. I gotta go turn talk my to fryers on. Yes, get them on. Sorry, man, I, thought you somebody I, knew. I have to start mine up at 3 o'clock, which means at 2 o'clock I gotta start heating stuff up. Right. And finally, we wrap up our final thoughts about the fair. James, what have you learned so far since we got here? I've learned that talking to people and being on the podcast is yeah. that as other people can hear this and learn from my from my conversations with other people and it's interesting to know is Yeah. I mean, so you found out rules about smoking. Mm -hmm. That was eight feet away from any building. That's right. Start. I've always known that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you learned about the guy you talked to had three food booths here. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And he was from Canada. He was from California. California, maybe. And he travels in a van. And basically, his work is to just travel to different fairs. Yeah. You ran into um, some. Friends at my church. Yeah, and why were they here? Do you remember? Uh, the grandkids came with us. Their current kids were showing chickens in 4-H. Chickens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. So right now, we're here at like, what, 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock, yeah. and there's not much open right now, right? Yeah. So most of the things open closer to 3 o'clock. Um, because right now, what's happening is it's mostly for 4-H, and they are showing their animals. Yeah. And when people start to get off work, like after 3 and after 5, that's when the grandstand has their yeah. show. And the food booths open up and the rides open. Because right now, even, I don't see a whole lot of other vendors. No. So I think the place really comes alive. And I think it comes alive later in the week, too. 
So what do you think, Mark? How would you rate the elephant ear? <laughs> I asked him with a full mouth. Was it pretty good? Good. Are you glad that you worked so hard to find it? <laughs> so, Mark, something you learned is that the oil had to be hot enough in order to cook the elephant ear, right? Mark, did you know an elephant ear is from an elephant ear? A real elephant ear, you No, it's fried <laughs> dough. I'm just kidding. It's fried dough. What all do you think is in an elephant ear? Oh, Mark, I'm just kidding. Is cinnamon in it? Did There's you know some cinnamon? Kings Island, they have, uh, is there sugar? Syrup and sugar and mm -hmm. Yeah. And probably some flour. Cool. How much was your elephant ear, Mark? $7. $7? Is it good? Is it worth the $7? Mm -hmm. Perfect. This podcast is brought to you by the Hillcroft Music Therapy Services and the clients who put their work into it. If you'd like more information about Hillcroft, please visit our website at www.hillcroft.org.